Thank you. So hello, everyone. I would like to first uh, thank you for coming and participating. I really appreciate it. And uh, at any time, if you have any questions or you would like to intervene in the presentation, please let me know. I'm going to put my face up for a quick hello, but obviously i um, not going to stay there all evening. Hello, everyone. I'd rather you looking at the presentation than looking at my face. But obviously, when I do this presentation, usually it's in person, so I didn't put any pictures of myself up, but mostly of my family. So I'll turn off the video again. Um, so first things first, my name is Veronique, and uh, I'm a military spouse for 16 years now. I'm a mother of two. You can see I have a daughter and a son. Uh, so obviously, moving has developed my taste for decorating. And because of that, I went and I got a certificate in home staging. And I named my company Redesign Your Style for two reasons. Redesign is actually something that is done in decorating. It's when you use your things that you have around the house and you just rearrange them or add small decorating elements to them. Um, so that's one of the reasons. But the other reasons as well is because as a military spouse, I find that I need to redesign my life every so often. Every time we move, I need to redesign my home, uh, my life, my work, my family life as well. So I found that this name also applied to my personal as well as my professional life. What we'll be discussed tonight, so what is staging, the seven steps to staging a home, the five key rooms, the two types of home staging, and then we'll have a question and answer. But as I said, at any point in time, if you do have a question, please let me know. So the first question I'd like to ask to everyone here is how many moves have you experienced? Okay, so um, let me see. If you can use your pointers in the top left-hand side of the screen, grab your pointers and put Put how many moves you've experienced in the military or how long have you been moving. So your point, your, there we go. Bella's got it. Good six to eight. Chris to Levitt. Gloria's three to five. Okay. So the question why I wanted, as obviously I want to get to know you and I want to know what your experience has been as, as uh, you know, as a military spouse in moving. But one of the things also that I want to discuss is because, um, you know, 10 years ago, nobody spoke about home staging and now it's all the rage. And why, you know, we went from people would just put up a, a sign up in front of their house and not do anything to their home to the completely opposite, opposite where we hire companies and everybody's always talking about it and, you know, home staging is such a rage. And the first reason why is because of things like HGTV, uh, magazines, everybody wants, you know, they see these shows, they see these magazines, all these perfect images, and now that's what buyers want, that's what buyers expect. So that's developed sophisticated buyers. And just looking at the amount of times that you have moved in this group, we can see that we, as military families, we are also sophisticated buyers because we, we, buy, we often buy homes compared to other people that sometimes will only buy one house and live there, uh, you know, for 40 years. Whereas us, we have very high expectations. So I like to call military spouses sophisticated buyers, and I think we know our stuff because we've we've done it quite a few times, and we know what we're looking for. So, um, and as I said, it, it's now it's the whole trend of home staging is really in, and it's it's almost a necessity when you're selling your home. So I want to discuss what's the difference between decorating versus home staging. This is something that is often asked. So decorating is basically your personal taste. So if you hire a designer to come to your house and you say, I want to decorate my home, well, the designer is going to ask you, what are your personal tastes? So if you say, I like lime green walls with uh, leopard print furniture, well, that's what the designer is going to do, right? <laughs> Whereas home staging, it needs to appeal to the majority of buyers. So it has nothing to do with what you like. It has everything to do with what the majority of buyers will like. So the purpose of home staging is basically, as I just said, making the house appealing to the largest number of buyers. When you decide to sell your home, it's no longer your home. It's a commodity for sale and it's competing with other houses in your neighborhood. And if you want the best price, you need to show it in its best light. 
uh, an analogy that I once heard with this is, you know, it's like going on a date, right? When you go on a date, you want to show yourself on, in the best light. So you're obviously going to put the makeup on and do your hair. You're not going to go to a date in sweatpants, right? So when you're showing your home, you want your home to be shown in the best light. And we'll discuss how to do that. So why stage your home? Um, these are statistics that I found uh, from the Real Estate and Staging Association. Obviously, they're going to preach, uh, you know, for, for the required here. Um, there's two things that I want to mention before I even go into the their, their, their list here, is that there's two things. Even if you stage your house really, really well, you have to make sure that your house is obviously very well priced. Um, so that's the real estate agent's job. And then the second thing too is that you want to make sure that you have excellent pictures. If you're going to, when you're going to work with your real estate agent, if the real estate agent takes out their phone from their pocket and takes pictures with their iPhone, um, even if you stage your house beautifully, it's not going to show well. So make sure that whichever real estate agent uh, you're going to be working with takes professional pictures because you don't want to do all this work and not have it shine through. Because how people look for homes now is through internet. We all know we go on MLS or on the online websites and we look at pictures and we all do that, right? And if the pictures look nice, we go, oh, I would like to go see that home. So obviously if it looks really good, it's going to look better on pictures. People are going to come and see it. You're going to get traffic and that's what we want. When you're selling a home, you need people to come in and see it. When you get the traffic, that's when you get a sale. Um, if it's well, if it's home staged and well presented, um, I mean, the, it's going to be described as a well maintained or move in ready or turn key. And that's, that's how you want your house described, right? You want all these key words coming out. And the, all, the other thing too is that if it's really well presented, um, the buyers are going to have less reasons to come and negotiate the price down, right? If everything's done in the house, um, after that, they can't really come back and negotiate uh, on the price with you. So um, as I said, if it's well done and it, it stands out from uh, the market, yours is going to sell first. So, I'm interested in knowing, obviously we're, as I said, we're all sophisticated buyers here. We've all bought, bought houses on several occasions. Um, and think about what your experience is, is and when you're going to visit a home, how do you perceive homes and what are you looking for? So I'm really wanting you to put on those buyer glasses tonight and trying to view your home through a buyer's perspective. Um, I love this picture because when I saw it, I said, that's totally not my family and I when we're moving. We're not rolling around on the floor and the boxes smiling and everything is la-di-da. Um, we're, we're more like this, this uh, video here, and I'll let uh, Margaret share it with you. So I'm going to share a 15-second video with you. <laughs> Um, please don't touch your screen and uh, I, give me a green check when you finish viewing it, okay? So it's going to go really fast, um, but it, it certainly speaks volumes as, uh, as how things can go in our homes and I, you know, it's quite funny. So here we go. I'm going to share the video and uh, just be patient. Emergency supports your immune and helps your body convert to Downtown people that want to play for you like this the other night, it's worth it. And how are you if you have to eat your bed? Throw it away. It's too late to make it now. Company is fucking it's great up the time. It's not working. It can't let people know we can get it. That should be stopped now. It didn't really work well for me though, but I'm not sure I worked for the others. Is everybody back now? Did, was everybody able to see the differences? Mm, okay. Do you want to describe the video? Um, yeah, so basically the video here just makes me laugh. It's a fairly long video, but it just the first 15 seconds 
this person is is so companies coming in the first thing it's a, it's a man dressed as a woman right he's imitating us when when we have company coming but what i love about this video is basically what he's saying right off the bat is you know we have to throw everything out we have to get rid of everything get rid of your beds if the beds are not done we we can't <laughs> let people know that we sit in this house we can't everything has to be so that's kind of like me that's exactly like me i should say because my husband every time he i we get the posting message i start saying we have to get rid of everything. We have to throw everything out. And then my husband starts sweating profusely because <laughs> he gets nervous because I just want to get rid of every single thing he owns, right? And Gloria has a question. Fennick, Gloria has a question. Oh, uh, yes. How do I view the question? You just ask her. Oh, or Gloria, put it go in ahead. The chat. Oh, sorry. I was looking in the chat. So, Gloria, you're muted. If you want to click on your mute button to unmute. Did you want to ask your question, Gloria? Let's try now. Just saying that I couldn't see the video, but then I think you're going to send it to me. So. Yes, so we're going to send it to you. Absolutely, yes. Thank you. So it was, you know, just get her done, right? Is that what, what it goes pretty much, Veronique? Well, it's more of the, you know, uh, and, and that was my next question, right? For you personally, when you're moving and when you get your posting message and you have to put your house up for sale, are you rather like the family here, you know, relax and everything's la-di-da, or are you more like Chris Fleming where you start having a panic attack and you go, we have to get rid of everything and nobody can know that we live in this house. And so why I don't just you use your to pointers get... to, uh, to share with us? Are you more like uh, everything has to go or like this happy family? <laughs> there we go. We got all. Yeah. We don't so... have many happy families. <laughs> yeah, the stress level of, of having everything. Panic at the disco here, Bella. I love that. <laughs> and Krista had a real estate photographer and videographer here today. Yes. Wow. Yes. So I'm I today the whole thing is is trying to, you know, um okay, well I'm I'm stepping. But today I want to help you and give you tools on how we can go through this process and not totally lose it. <laughs> Although I myself I I I still I still get panicky every time I get the posting message and I have to put the house up for sale. Um again the whole uh point or the whole exercise today is viewing your house as a buyer and not as your home anymore, but as a house that somebody's going to come in and want to buy. So I want you to put yourself in that perspective. So I'm showing you two images here. And I, I'm showing you these because uh, we're in a tough market unless you live in Barrie, <laughs> uh, like Krista, right? Krista lives in Barrie. Um, I mean, the Toronto, Vancouver market are excellent, but everywhere else in Canada, the, Toronto, the market is fairly slow. Uh, so that means that there's a lot of homes for sale. They take a very long time to sell. And as a military family, we don't have time. That's the main issue with us. Like we can't hold on to our house until we get the price we want, right? So we, have, we need to get rid of them as quickly as possible. And by doing home staging, you're ensuring that. So I'm showing you these two images because I want you to be a buyer right now. Uh, I'm showing you two homes and they're about the same price in the same neighborhood. And so for the same price in the same neighborhood, which one would you go more towards? Which one would you want to buy if they're in the same price range um, and neighborhood? So use yes. your pointer to make your choice. Yes, and I was hoping everybody would click that one because that's the one I did. <laughs> if everybody would click the other one, we had a, an issue. Yeah, so um, as I said, so if you know that you're competing and there's five other homes in your neighborhood for sale, um, you really have to make sure that yours is the best one and that shows the best because you want yours to sell first, right? So the first thing we're going to talk about are the seven steps to home staging. And this is, we're going to talk about the cheapest ways to home, to do home staging, the least expensive ways that you can do on your own, by yourself, you don't need help. You can do these and making sure that uh, you can get, you know, a quick sale. So these are tools. And I don't want anybody starting to hyperventilate here. I mean, I'm just giving you tools. And, it, and if you do any one of these, it's better than nothing. So first step, keep calm and let's start decluttering. 
<laughs> so as I just mentioned, decluttering and is, is the number one way and the least expensive way because it doesn't cost you anything to add value to your home because clutter makes a room or a house seem a lot smaller and is a huge turnoff for potential buyers. And I put the third point here bold because I want you to really integrate this but this is your opportunity for you to re reduce the amount of stuff that you're going to need to unpack later. So why I'm saying this is because do yourself a favor. Don't move the things that you're not going to use down the road. Declutter for the sale, but not only declutter for the sale, declutter for yourself because you know that, they're, yeah, they're going to pack everything in those boxes, but then you're going to have to unpack everything out of those boxes and then find a way to, or place to put them. So do yourself a favor and declutter and get rid of as much stuff as possible. All the stuff that you know that you're not going to use, just get rid of it. Um, and so, and, then, and on the next point is, every single space in your home should be examined both inside and out, and that's, we're going to discuss about that. So the issue with our stuff that we all have lots and lots of, including myself, we all love our possessions, and sometimes we don't see them anymore. But when buyers come in with those buyer's glasses, the only thing they can focus on is the stuff in a room, and that's all they can see, right? So here I would like to do a little poll. So I'm just going to take the ball back, mm -hmm. and I'm going to open up the poll. And the question of the magical poll today is, what do you notice first? In this room. In this room. So just write down your answer and then click Submit. What do you notice first in this room? And I can't do the poll, so I am going to just use my arrow. Wait a second, there's too many things. Squirrel. <laughs> so, and just give me a green check when you've written your, uh, your answer, please. There we go. So we're waiting on Krista, on Gloria, on Bella, and on Anna. And uh, if you can't see the poll, I think, Anna, you may have a trouble seeing the poll. So Krista, Deanna's too many books, shelves. Okay, I'm going to close the poll now so you can see the answers of what we've got. It takes about 20 seconds to close the poll. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Three patient in the virtual classroom, that's for sure. Okay, and on one second, there we go. So now you'll be able to see what the poll results are. And apply. <clears throat> And my poll is not working for some reason. Can you see the answers? Well, I, I see everybody's notes here in the chat saying that okay. they see books. That's what I see. Too many books, 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 books um, in the chat here. Great. Um, and, and you're right, okay? So a lot of people, so if, you, if you're a buyer, so this person obviously loves books. And that's great, right? As I said, there's a difference between, you know, decorating for personal taste and home staging. So if you apply this to yourself and you put on your buyer's perspective glasses and you walk into your, a room, well, you have to try and see, okay, what do I have too much of? And everybody came, or mostly came up with the books, but did anybody notice the beautiful bay window with all the natural light or the size of the room or the beautiful hardwood floors, right? Nobody noticed the room itself or the, the structure or the architecture of the room. Everybody just noticed the stuff. So that's Where's my the point pool? here. Where's the poll? Um, Bella showed a poll. She said there's a poll wouldn't, oh, the poll wouldn't work. Oh, the no. Bookshelf. God, I thought there was a poll somewhere. <laughs> I'm looking for a poll. Yes, yes, and I love, Heather, thank you. The yellow paint, for me, that's huge. Well, to me, I just see yellow paint, books, and huge furniture. That's all I see, and I can't even see, as I said, the, the, the space in the room. I can't even see the window, the natural light, the beautiful hardwood floors. All I see is the paint and the books. So. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so how to declutter? So the, the first step is obviously going room by room, removing anything that does not belong, because obviously we know how we are, right? Like there's stuff from the office that ends up in the kitchen. And so that's, you know, just basic things. 
Um, and the main thing here is leaving only the basics. So really removing as much as you can from the room and leaving the basics so buyers, when they walk in, they can actually see the room and not just focus on the stuff. So I love this image because the image that I'm showing here, the before and after, which I took online, um, and where it shows budget, budget friendly. So this person did not do anything to the kitchen, nothing at all. The only thing they did was remove all their stuff from the kitchen. So obviously it's maybe a little exaggerated because they had the Cheerios box and everything. But the point is there. Look at the kitchen after. It's stunning, it's beautiful. They put a bowl with green apples on it, that's all they did. They didn't spend any money whatsoever, they just decluttered, right? And on, in a kitchen I know that we ha always have lots of stuff and we'll come back to how to um, stage your kitchen, but that's an example of focusing on the space and not on the stuff in the space. Um, so when I said inside and out, the out part is, you know, your nightstands, your countertops, your desks, any flat surface needs to be decluttered. So the second step, and I, I know what people usually think, they say, fine, I'm just going to take everything off the, the flat surfaces and put it in a closet. <laughs> but that's a problem because we can't, we have to declutter inside as well. Because what do we do as buyers? Just think back when you go to buy a house, what's the first thing that you do? You walk into a home and you go, oh, closet doors. Let me, let, let me look what's behind these doors, right? The first thing we do as soon as we see a door is we open the doors. So you know the buyers are going to open every single door in your room, so in your house. So they're going to go room by room and open it to see how much space. So that's why it's so important to also declutter um, inside as well. Um, it, and the problem is if everything is full, if your closet, if you open the closet and everything's going to tumble on you, the first thing the buyer's going to think is there's not enough storage in this house. So right off the bat, that's going to be a turn off. That's going to be a huge negative point. Oh, we're not going to be able to fit. There's not enough storage. Our stuff is not going to fit in here. So it's really important to also declutter inside as well. So I give you an example, two examples here. So we have example A, uh, where we have a closet. So the rule of thumb is try to remove at least 30% of the items. So leaving more room. So if we take example A and example B. So one of the good things here is that they use baskets at the top. So that's a really good way uh, to hide stuff. So if you have all these little objects or, you know, scarves or whatever, use baskets. They look really clean and you can put a lot of things in there. And it's important to leave extra space because when I look at the second closet, I tell myself, wow, there's a lot of space in here. Look at all the extra space that I have. Whereas the first one, I would tell myself, this closet's way too small. My stuff is not going to fit in here. Um, again, if we move to the pantry, look at the pantry. And the pantry is this place where you really want to go do some cleaning because I know how, you know, I know my house how it is. I always have these half open boxes of stuff or spices that are open and are spilling everywhere. Or So it's a really good time to do a good clean out. And again, they've put everything in ni nice and neat containers. I'm not saying that you need to do this. It's just an example of just doing a decluttering uh, of your closets, the, the impact that it has and the psychological impact that it has on buyers as well, right? Um, other thing, de depersonalize. So again, if you have any type of collection, personal items, um, so we all have family pictures and that's fine. I usually leave my family pictures up, but I have a very limited, I have some in my staircase and that's it. I don't have family pictures in my living room, dining room, uh, master bedroom, right? So try to tone down uh, family pictures or personal pictures, any type of religious items trophies, as I said, personal collections, if you, I don't know, collect coffee cups or little mugs or uh, tea cups, you know, whatever, if, just try to really depersonalize the space so buyers can see themselves. Because the thing is, people are not able to see themselves in a space if it's too personalized. So it's really important that you help the buyers uh, to be able to see themselves in the space. And if there's too many personal items in there, they won't be able to do it and they'll just walk out. If you have modified a room in your, in your house to fit your personal needs, that's fine. When you're living in it, no problem. You could do whatever you want. It's your house. When you put it up for sale, it's important that you return the room to uh, the, the specific uh, meaning intended for the room. 
And this particular case, that was my house that I had in Toronto. Um, when I bought it, the previous owners were using it as a playroom, which is fine, um, but obviously when I set it up for sale, I put it as a di dining room because you need to help, once again, buyers see what the spaces are for. Empty spaces or spaces that are not uh, with their original function, buyers don't understand, they don't get it, they can't visualize themselves, so it's really important that you help them. Um, and here is the confusing part. So although you need to remove the excess from your space, it doesn't mean that your space needs to be cold and uninviting. So a stage home should f feel warm and cozy. Uh, the extra clutter should be put away, but you should still leave some decor elements to your space. So it just adds warmth. So my best example here is a model home. So this is a model home, uh, Cardell's an Ottawa builder here, and this is one of their model homes. So even though nobody's living in this house, it's a model home, but it still really looks warm and inviting. So what they've left or put into the model home is very, it's decor elements and they're not personalized, right? Um, so people can actually see themselves, they say, oh, this is very inviting, and they can visualize themselves in this space. And I know that previously, maybe if you, when home staging first started, they would declutter to a point where it was too empty. They would basically leave a chair and a lamp in a, in a room. And that's not what we're trying to do here. You still need to leave um, furniture and decor elements, but it's just removing all that personalized, uh, those, those personalized items and removing the excess, right? Like we, we said before, the books. Books are nice, but that, that's too much. You shouldn't have four bookshelves or bookcases in there. Uh, okay, we have a question here. Um, yeah, taking, yeah, t doing the decluttering as you go, Krista, is a really good uh, way to do it. Waiting all the way at the end to do it, then it gets overwhelming, so that's a really good uh, way to manage and get on top of all that excess stuff that we have. And question from Bella, we have three bedrooms, one is being used as an office, anything we can do to help buyers other than turn it into a bedroom? Uh, no, you can, as long as, as I said, it's decluttered, that's the main thing. Offices sometimes tend to be overly cluttered, so if you keep it really nice and clean and nothing on the desk, um, that should be good, because people will be able to visualize that, it, well, they will know that it's a bedroom. If it, let me know if I, okay, perfect. Um, step two, once again, the, it doesn't cost you anything unless you want to hire somebody to do it, but the step two is clean, clean, clean. Basically, what somebody once told me was, nobody wants to buy somebody else's stuff, right? And we're all the same. If we walk into a house and the house is absolute, absolutely filthy, we're not going to want to buy it, right? We're not going to feel comfortable. We can't visualize ourselves in that home, and that's happened to me. Uh, my husband and I walked into a home, and about 20 seconds later, we walked out because it was just so dirty. We, we just couldn't deal with it, and we just walked out, right? So it, it could have been the most beautiful house on the block, but because it was such in a bad, uh, filthy state, we couldn't deal with it. So it's really important. This is, you know, as I said, it, it's not going to cost you anything. Yes, it's really annoying. Yes, it, asks, it requires time and energy, but this is such an important part. After decluttering, this is the most important part. So obviously there's the routine cleaning, like dishes, uh, you know, cleaning your bathrooms, vacuuming, but really don't, don't underestimate the power of the uh, other elements such as, you know, windows, windowsills, baseboards, grout, uh, refrigerator, oven. And I'm saying refrigerator and oven now, which I used to not have on my list, but now I have because one of the real estate agents, I heard him say to clients, oh, just look in the oven. If the oven's clean, that means this house was well maintained. And I started sweating profusely because uh, my oven's not that well. <laughs> I clean everything else, but I don't put as much energy in my oven. But now I know. Yes, yes, smells. Yes, next one. One more That's thing, Veronique, before that. Mm -hmm. So we just met with our Brookfield, and they said $100 uh, for cleaning of the house, either before or after, or any time during the move, mm -hmm. um, comes out of core, but the rest will come out of custom. So if you have room in your custom, you can get your windows clean professionally, your carpet mm -hmm. wash professionally, yes. all coming out of them. And, and that's a huge thing, um, Krista, thank you, because that's the next point, smells. If you have a lot of pets in your home, 
Um, a lot of people are very sensitive allergies or they're very sensitive to smell for pets. Like people that don't have pets are very sensitive to that. So if you do have pets, uh, you could always get your carpets clean or rent a machine and clean them yourself. So that's, that's a really good uh, way to make a sale because as I said, if, if, if you have somebody that has pet allergies that come into the home, right away they're not gonna buy the home, right? They're gonna react. So, um, and as you said, Margaret, if you have money in your envelope to do that, then go ahead. Um, again, smoking, for anybody that does smoke, avoid smoking in the home, even in the garage or the back, try to smoke as far as possible. Again, for anybody that has allergies or can't stand the smell of, uh, of smoking. Cooking, if you know that you, obviously you, we don't know when we have a visit, but if you do know that you're gonna have a visit, an, an open house or people coming in, just, just try to be conscientious about what you're gonna cook uh, avoid cooking strong smelling foods uh, because that could be a huge turnoff for me. What I do usually if I know I'm going to have visitors, uh, I obviously try to cook the least amount of possible, like make a salad or whatever, you know, cereal, toast, something that's really fast and it won't smell. But the other thing I do is always I open my windows. So I, you know, I air out the house for a good 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever amount of time to make sure I got some fresh air going and some air circulation. Um, and, and as I said, that's happened to me before. In Toronto, we walked into a house and the, the, the smell of spices was so strong that I couldn't even imagine it coming out. Like I, I told myself, even if I paint, I'm sure it's still gonna smell like this. So we automatically eliminated the house right away. The other thing too is garbage. Uh, make sure that if you do, you know, have visitors coming, make sure that you empty out your garbage, your compost. For people that have babies, diaper pails, um, I've heard this several times, people that didn't empty out their diaper pails and when it's been sitting there for a while and um, they would just walk out right away from the house because they couldn't stand the smell. So just pay attention to that. Paint, 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 paint. So another very inexpensive way to add value to your home. Yes, you do have to spend a little bit of money, but really it doesn't cost you that much. This is my previous bathroom. I couldn't believe I bought a bathroom that had pink tile and pink walls, but in the end, I didn't have the money because it was going to cost us so much to remove the pink tile. So I just painted it right away. It just changed the whole bathroom. Um, right now, and as Krista was saying before, paint, um, right now the, the biggest trend is gray. So neutral color right now is gray. So if you're gonna do any painting, paint a light gray and that, that's what people want. People want modern, they want, uh, you know, gray for people now means young, modern, fresh, clean. Um, stick away from beige. Beige used to be the neutral, now beige, uh, when people see beige, it tends to make them think that the house is older, out of date, out of style. So as I said, um, sorry, Krista, I'm just reading your comment and Big Free Food isn't showing. Yes, yes, and, and that's the thing too, right? Some people bake things, they can either bake bread or they bake cookies or, so that's up to you. Um, and then, I'm sorry, did I miss something? Yes, carpet cleaning was covered, yes. A carpet cleaning, as I said, with pets. Vanilla on the stove, that's another one that I've heard. Yes, <laughs> you're right, Krista. Gray is a touchy color. Purple tint, green tint, exactly. Um, so the Revere Pewter that you said, the thing with gray, you're right, there's all these different tints. Um, you know, one that's a very neutral one, that's almost, almost like a um, gray beige, I'll type it in. Um, so Worldly Gray by Sherwin-Williams is a fairly, sorry, that's my uh, my phone here. Uh, Worldly Gray by Sherwin-Williams is a very light gray that's almost like a grayish. So that's a, a good color. Um, and yes, if you go, you have to go to the paint store and actually ask them for the, the a very neutral gray. I can post some more after from Benjamin Moore that they have very neutral grays as well. Um, I just have a blank right now. I would have to go get Spinner Look Home by Deluxe. Yes. Yeah, so if you go in any type of paint store, I'll go get my paint my paint samples from Benjamin Moore. I have a list. 
Um, so painting. Okay, step four, lighting. So as again, we're buyers, we walk into a house, if the house is dark and dingy, we're not gonna wanna live there. So make sure that there's a lot of lighting. So, um, you know, make sure that the drapes are open. If there's not enough light with the drapes, make sure that you add a table lamp, freestanding lamp, you can change the light fixtures. Uh, the example here with the Spider-Man bedding, that light fixture only has one light bulb and that's a huge issue, right? When you only have one light bulb and a light fixture, obviously it's not gonna offer a lot of lighting. So you can change the light fixture. I had changed it to one that has three light bulbs. Um, and yeah, on the day of the showings, just make sure that all the drapes are open and everything's open. And step five, don't underestimate curb appeal. So people will get their first impressions of your home just by driving up, right? So I've seen homes where people have these beautiful porches that they use as storage, right? So they leave the hockey equipment, they leave all their summer stuff there, they leave toys in the front. So make sure that when people are walking up, you know, that they get a, a really good impression of your home, clean out the porch. You can leave some chairs there, do a little bit of staging, put a little table with something on it, but just make sure that it's not used as storage. Just clear out whatever is not supposed to be there. Again, you can add a welcoming mat. This, the image here I found on modern design was uh, they painted the door red. That's a little bit much, but I mean, you get the idea of just adding some spark, some spark to your, your front door. Um, a wreath, and I see that questions you recommend leaving the lights on when you leave for a showing. Yes, definitely. Open all the drapes, open all the lights, definitely. You don't want people trying to find where your lights, uh, your lights are and how to turn them on, and it always shows much better when all the lights are on, definitely. Okay, repairs. So this is, you know, now we're getting more, I'm going more and more into details here. So the repairs. So just make sure if you have any little repairs that are due that, you know, you've just been letting drag on for a while, that you do them before you have your open house. You know, leaky faucets, loose doorknobs, replacing light bulbs. Just make sure that it's 100% perfect. And the, one of the reasons why is because buyers, when they see something, they tend to overestimate the cost of it. We were talking about carpet cleaning, right? So if you have a, a carpet stain and you don't get it cleaned, a buyer is going to come in and they're going to say, oh my goodness, this carpet, oh, there's a stain in it. I'm going to have to replace it. It's going to cost me $3,000, right? Whereas if you go in and you clean your carpet and you get it cleaned before, well, they're not going to even see that as a cost. But if you leave it and there's a stain in it, they're going to estimate, they're going to come back to you and they're going to negotiate down. They're going to say, well, we're going to have to change the carpet, so I want $3,000 less off the, the listing price. So really try to avoid any red flags and finished projects so people don't get focused on those little things and try to negotiate down. Um, there's something that I've found on the internet. These are just numbers, but, you know, sometimes just repairing something will cost you, let's say, $400, but then after that, it's going to add value or they're not going to negotiate down because of that, right? So it's money in your pocket. So sometimes it takes a little bit of investment to make more money down the road, but it's, it's definitely worth it. So now we're in the really nitty gritty details. So sometimes it just takes some small updates. So you've decluttered, you've cleaned, you've painted, everything looks fabulous. And sometimes you have little, you know, little things that you can do um, that don't cost a lot of money. I love Pinterest because Pinterest, I mean, it's the penny pinching of websites. I love it. I am always on there. So example here, this person had this light fixture. So you've painted all your walls uh, gray and you have this golden light fixture that's kind of um, giving out the age of your home. Well, this person just bought a $5 can of Rust-Oleum paint and just spray painted it and it looks fabulous, right? Same thing as gold doorknobs, that's a big thing. Usually with uh, older homes, they, you know, so even if you do uh, do a beautiful paint job, then the doorknobs is, is, is giving the age of your home away. So, you know, little projects. Uh, another example here, some items that you do use every day, for example, we can see the couch here with the pillows, uh, the cushions, so, you know, the, the, the sofa's looking kind of frumpy, but basically the person just changed the cushions on the sofa and look how fabulous it looks, right? Same thing if you're gonna do um, shower curtains. If you've been using the shower curtains for a few years, just go out to Walmart or, 
you know, in an expensive store, just buy a new one. I mean, it's it's a lot less trouble than trying to clean a shower curtain. Just get a nice, fresh, crisp shower curtain and makes a whole difference with uh, the bathroom. Oh, oh, one last thing I didn't say here, towels. Towels is a big thing. I I just staged a home recently and the the lady had these hand towels and so she had a family with kids and they were such in bad shape. So I, I told her, just go get nice hand towels. Same thing, if you have, you know, towels are kind of look kind of tired in your bathroom, just get a nice set of white towels. You know, don't, don't, don't spend a lot of money, $7 or $6 on a towel, and those are the home staging towels. So when you have people come over, just put out those nice fresh towels out, and it's just gonna make your bathroom look like a spa. So, as I said, all these little things that you can update, that makes a huge difference. Okay, um, once again, going back to you as a buyer, uh, which room is the most important one to you? So, when you're going out to buy a house, what's the most important room that you, for you when you're buying a home that you're going to really pay attention to? So either put this in the chat or if you want to grab your pointer, if you're able to grab your pointer and click on the room that, uh, oh, look how everybody, that speaks to you the most or put it, so Heather and, and Anna are the kitchen. Oh, oh Krista, kitchen. everybody's the kitchen. Everybody's the kitchen, yes. And you can guess that the kitchen is is in the top five rooms that really need to be focused on. So everything that we've just been through applies to what we're going to look at. So decluttering, opening up the, ensuring lighting, making sure it's clean, um, those apply, but we're going to go through even more details here. Yes. So the first thing we said, people are going to drive up to your home. They're going to look at the outside of the home. So how does it look? You know, what's, what's going on there? Then they're going to come in your entryway. When they're in the entryway, this is where they get their impression of the house itself. If it's dark, cluttered, dirty, you know, and this is where they're going to, what you're laying out what they're going to expect for the rest of the house, right? So if it looks good in the entryway, then they're going to go, okay, we're going to continue this visit. But if right off the bat, it's, it's not looking good, they're just going to get out right away. They're not even going to visit your home. And often the entryway, people don't pay as much attention to it. But really, this is where in 15 seconds, the person's going to say, I'm either continuing this tour or I'm getting out. So it's, it's really important to, to, to go and take a little bit of time and do the entryway as well. So uh, here my tidbits are remove coat, coat racks, because coat racks are often uh, clutter magnets, right? People will just pile up coats in there. Um, so no shoes on the floor. Make sure they're all in the closet. You don't want people tripping over shoes. Uh, they're hazardous for buyers, and it doesn't show well. I mean, who likes to be greeted by 15 pairs of shoes, which has happened to me previously, right? So make sure that there's nothing, uh, no boots, no uh, nothing on the floor. And store all the items that are not in season. This comes back to what we were saying about the closets and the decluttering. But often in our entryway, we tend to keep a lot of winter stuff or uh, sports equipment. And so just make sure that anything that's not in season is put away. Remove as much as possible from the closet. And I, you know, I always add a little one of those 99 cents air freshener at Walmart and I put put it in my closet because obviously nobody wants to be greeted by the smell of stinky feet. So I have a before and after here, and now that you're all home staging experts, you can maybe see a little bit of, of what they've done. So they've painted a nice neutral color that's welcoming, and they added decor. So they removed the clutter, so they had the basket on the floor with stuff in there, with a chair with more stuff, it seems like winter boots. So they removed all the clutter, and they actually put decor elements in there. So. That just gives you an idea, and obviously it's a lot more welcoming. Krista has a great question there. What about level boot racks that are holding shoes and boots but are clean looking? Uh, preferably if you can put them in your closet, that would be best. Can you? Anything that could be put in the closet? Is, is best. If you can't, you can't. Then at least it's clean looking. They're not all spread out on the floor. Um, 
one of the other things is put away the extra. I know we all have 15 pairs of shoes. <laughs> Maybe just keep out two that you actually wear every day. That's the thing, right? When you're home staging, it's a lot of work because you're paring down and you have to kind of like when people ask me questions about toys, well, I don't want to take all the toys away. Well, you don't have to take all the toys away. Maybe keep, you know, three or four toys that are, your kids act, really play with that they really love and put away the rest. So we try to pare down. So if you can pare down the amount of shoes, that would maybe be another solution. Um, so living room. Living room, again, this is where people see themselves entertaining and relaxing. Once again, you have to help buyers see themselves in the space. So allow people to circulate in the room, and I'll show you a picture here to de describe what, it, uh, what that means. So create flow in the living room, remove larger pieces of furniture, uh, declutter as much as possible, put away all those little you know, TV remotes or any items that are on the coffee tables. I know we often, tr you know, there's a lot of clutter that ends up being on those tables, so uh, try to pay attention to that. And move furniture away from the walls. I know that's counterintuitive for a lot of people because we think that by backing up all our furniture against the walls, it's going to make the room look bigger, but it doesn't. It's actually the opposite. So here's the um, Moving Mountains design. I took one of their before and after pictures. And this is a perfect example. If you look at the after, uh, none of the furniture is against the walls. It's actually fairly far away from the walls. Um, and they've created a, um, an area here. So when I say create flow, if you look at the first per picture, um, the couch and the coffee table are blocking the way into the living room. So you can't even access the living room. You have to go around a coffee table. There's stuff everywhere. So be mindful when you're staging your living room to make sure that there's nothing blocking the way. And, you know, as I said, just create some space, some flow into, this, into the space. And where in the second picture you see here, um, they've moved it a little bit so people can actually walk around the furniture. There's room to walk into the space. And um, hopefully that, that gives you a good idea. Yeah, not blocking away, creating the flow. And as I said, not necessarily backing up the furniture against the wall. Move it away from the walls. It's better that way. Kitchen. Aha. The, the heart, and the, the heart and the, of the home here, uh, absolutely imperative that your kitchen is in its best condition possible because you all said it, that's what you all look at. So the kitchen, so we have a tendency, as we saw in the first picture, to have way too much stuff in our kitchen, too much stuff on our counters. So really try to limit the number of large, larger items that are on your countertop. So try to limit it to two. Um, the example here is a person had a blender, a toaster, they had their spoons, they had their knives, they had all these extra items. So really pare it down um, and try to keep a maximum of two items on your counter. Remove anything on the top of the cabinets. That drives me nuts. When people pile stuff at the top of the cabinets, remove everything at the top of the cabinet. That really uh, makes your space look a lot bigger. If you have a pot rack, um, either remove it or reduce it to a minimum. As you can see in the picture here, you know, they had 15 pots before. They put two, you know, three items on it. That looks a lot more, uh, looks a lot cleaner. And remove any extra cabinets, islands, or furniture. So in this uh, particular picture, they had an island and they removed it once again because it was blocking the flow. People had a hard time circulating in the kitchen and it just made it look smaller. Um, I have an example of that. Uh, I staged a home for a military family a few weeks ago, and the lady had a, a shelving unit where she kept two coffee machines, her, you know, her, her mixer, her bread maker. And when I saw that, the first thing I, I thought was, well, while you're telling people that you have storage space in your kitchen, that's what it's crying out, right? And she said, well, I don't. Well, <laughs> that's not the message that you want to give to buyers. So she had to remove, like we had to put away that shelving unit and she had to put all our stuff in the garage, like all that extra stuff. Because if you have extra pieces of furniture that needs to hold all your kitchen things in there, that means that, yeah, your kitchen doesn't have enough storage and right away that's a red flag for buyers. Uh, this drawing rack for every showing. Ideally, yes. Uh, Krista, uh, as I said, Selling a home is a lot of work and it can be a lot of trouble. And yes, if you re do remove your dish drying rack, um, I even put away my toaster. <laughs> my, to my toaster is always under my counter. And yeah, we, it's, it, because the thing is people want to see, think as a buyer, what do we want to see? We want to see counter space. 
So if there's too much stuff on the counters, right away we think, oh, there's not enough counter space. So you really want to flaunt the amount of counter space you have. And if you don't have a lot, then that's even worse. So you have to make sure that you don't have anything on those counters. You really want to show that you have a lot of workable counter space. Okay, bathrooms. Obviously, bathrooms is another big thing. Um, so remove all personal items from counters, bath and shower. So what I do is having a microwave a big deal. It's directly on your counter, Bella. Um, if it's directly on your counter and you can't put it anywhere else, then you don't have a choice. Um, that's, that's a hard one, unless you don't use it. Oh, <laughs> you don't have one. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I would actually ask your real estate agent that one because it depends on what people are looking for in your area and if it's a big deal. Um, because worst comes to worst, you know, you can always go buy one and say, you know, it's included and not lose money about negotiating for a microwave. So definitely talk to your real estate agent about that one. Okay, so microwave on the counter, yes. So all depending, it, um, if you don't have a choice, just leave it. Um, if you're not really using it, then put it away. Over the stove, we did all except the electrical. It was very affordable. Yes. Over the stove is a good one. Um, okay. Um, bathrooms, yes. So my trick for bathrooms is that, okay, so if you look at the first picture and you see the stuff on the counter, I did another home for another military family and I almost... I, when I walked in, so this this woman, she always looks so wonderful. She has the most beautiful hair and the most beautiful makeup. And then I walked in her bathroom and I knew why, because her counters were full, 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 full of all these beauty products. And I said, oh my goodness, people are going to walk in here and they're going to say, there's no storage whatsoever. So what we did is we got those Dollarama baskets and we just put everything placed. So we placed all of her creams in one and all the makeups in one and all those. So, and we put it under her counter, uh, you know, in her vanity. And yes, people are going to open them, but at least it's going to be all nice and cleanly stored compared to having everything out on your counter. So really just get those baskets. Same thing for, you know, your shower items, you know, toys or shampoos and stuff. Just go get those Dollarama baskets. Just put everything in there. Just put it under your, your vanity and then it's going to look clean when people are coming in and, and visiting. Um, as well, on the day of the visit, close all the toilet seats before a visit. I mean, nobody really wants to be looking at your toilet. So just, that's a little thing that I like to do. I always close the toilet seats and put away any trash cans or toilet brush. You know, in the bathroom, we often have open trash cans. So just make sure that you put those away as well, because those are the type of things as buyers we don't really like to look at. So those are little details that you can really uh, put a narrow shape on the toilet paper. Ooh. <laughs> Yes, if you do want to go through that, you can put a little arrow shape in the toilet paper. I love that. <laughs> and again, remove all rugs and seat covers. Those are big no-nos. Nobody wants to see those. So make sure even, you know, bath mats and stuff like that, um, you, you, you can put those away because really it makes the space look smaller and really, uh, I did a presentation last uh, last week and some of the ladies were shuddering just talking about bath mats. So that's the perception of people about bath mats, uh, you know, dirt, dirt magnets, dirt magnets. So if you do have one, you can always roll it up and put it under your counter because um, they usually don't add much to the space. They usually take away from the space. Again, because it makes the space look smaller, your eye goes to the, the carpet, it can't focus on anything else in the room. So another little tidbit there. <laughs> and I will towel animals on the bed. I love that. Master bedroom. So this is one of the main focus. So if you have, obviously you have kids' bedrooms and other bedrooms, uh, which are always, you know, nice to, to work on. But really, the master be bedroom is where you need to put all your effort because the people that are buying the house, that's where they have to be able to see themselves relaxing. If they can't see, if they don't find that the master bedrooms are relaxing space for them, they're not going to want to buy the house. So really put a lot of effort into this space. So master bedroom, remove any office furniture, if anybody has any uh, TVs. In this case, uh, add table lamps on each side. 
And my biggest trick for this space is buying a white duvet cover uh, because it just gives a spa-like feeling. It's, it's like we were just saying, going to a hotel, right? Why do hotels all have white duvet covers? They look relaxing, they give a spa-like feeling. So do like the hotels, get yourself a, a white duvet cover and it's just gonna change the whole atmosphere of the room. Ooh, fish tanks. Yeah, if you could move that out of your master bedroom, that would be that would be best because um, I'm not sure how people people in general don't really feel about feel about fish tanks in the bedroom. I'm not sure if that gives a relaxing feeling. So if you could move it anywhere else to your office, to uh, even a kid's bedroom, wouldn't be would be not as bad. But the master bedroom definitely it would it would need to move. Finally, if you need help, you can hire a professional. Uh, Brookfield reimburses home staging from your personalized benefits. So they'll uh, reimburse you for a professional home staging consultation fee. If, you, if the home stager wants to sell you, you know, renting furniture and all that, they don't reimburse that, but they will reimburse a consultation fee. And obviously, I would recommend it because it's hard to be objective when it's your own home and people, as I said before, we often don't see our stuff anymore and having somebody coming in and even for myself when I sold my previous home, uh, I, to me in my mind I had staged it perfectly, you know, 100% and my real estate agent came in and told me, oh there's still too much stuff in your daughter's bookcase and oh there's still, still too much stuff in your daughter's uh, closet. <laughs> so even for me, he, he came in and had to give me a few little pointers to, to continue decluttering and, and doing all that. But um, a lot of people are not aware that they can get home staging uh, a consultation, you know, with Brookfield. So do take advantage of that. So the two types of home staging, obviously if you're going to go with a home stager, you have to make sure that you're getting the least expensive one because the first type of home staging are the ones that spend 1-3% to of the value of your home. Those are the ones that do larger rentals. If you think about the property brothers, you know, they'll come in and they'll redo the kitchen or repaint the cabinets or, you know, that type of work. But if you just do a type of redesign home staging, um, it's just changing some minor elements. You know, you can do light fixtures or the paint as we were saying. And if you want to save money, obviously you just ask the stager for a list of things that they think that you need to do and then you can do the work yourself and obviously save money. Um, obviously stagers often, they, they can do it for you or they can get people to do it for you, but it, you know, the least expensive way is just to do it yourself. And um, you can look at the stager's portfolio and ask them what their process just to make sure that you're both on the same page in, in regards to how much money and, how, and what you want them to do for you. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Chris, I just saw your question. I have a bunny rabbit in the backyard. I've been trying to give her away. I was hoping she would sell with the house. <laughs> well, good luck with that. I don't know if they're, I, I don't know much about bunny rabbits, but um, yeah, obviously that, that can be an issue. Um, if you I know you were, I think you're saying that you were going, you're posted to Kingston, so definitely have that talk with your real estate agent. Maybe they have a solution for you or they know someone or they can, Set something up for you. Oh, it's just a big cage. Okay, yeah. Well, at least it's in the yard. It's not in a house. Um, I did consultation about a week ago that they had a huge, like a bunny cage in the kitchen. So that obviously went in the garage because you know, not many buyers would want to have a bunny rabbit in the kitchen. But those are all things that you can ask your real estate agent because they know the markets where you are. Um, yeah, and after discussing all this with you guys, I think the main point that I want to I want to put across to you is home staging to staging for living. So now that you know all these points, I think the main thing is that when you move next time, to do them right away, right? If you're going to be doing changing the light fixtures or painting, because you want to enjoy, you're going to put in all that work and you want to enjoy it, right? So why don't do the work at the beginning for the set for selling down the line, but at least get to enjoy it while you're there. Um, I just I just did a color consultation for a home staging and they just painted the whole house and it just breaks my heart because for two years she hated the beige that she had in her home and it drove her nuts and she was completely miserable and now she's painted the whole house 
for somebody else, which she's going to sell to, right? So if you're going to do it, do it at the beginning, and at least you get to enjoy it. And finally, your home is your most valuable asset. So you can, in the market that we're in right now, you can make or you can lose money, and that happens, right? It's a buyer's market. They have the upper hand on us. So the buyers are sophisticated, they expect more, they want more, so really investing the time and the money before the sale can really reap a larger reward later in terms of if you make a profit, and not even making a profit, I think for us it's the main issue is, is just getting a house sold quickly because we don't want to be stuck with an empty home for a year while we're living elsewhere, right? So it's really worth to put in that time and that money and that energy before the sale to make sure that you do get a quick sale and that your house is going to be the one that's going to sell first on the block. And that's it. So do you have any questions or answer questions for uh, Veronique today? While we're waiting for questions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a, a link in the chat if you wouldn't mind double clicking on it and then coming back by clicking on the blue and green ball at the bottom of your screen. Um, this is a link just for a very short survey so that we can constantly improve our virtual programs. Krista, <laughs> I'm going to go get my paint colors right now. I'll be back. In. I'll put the little coffee cup running Excellent. to get my paint. So Heather, yes, phenomenal, phenomenal presentation. So we'll we'll be here with you as soon as you get back uh, from filling in the evaluation. That would be great. Anna and Candace, are you able to see the evaluation? Anna, probably not because you're joining on a phone, iPhone. And Candace, are you able to see that presentation? The uh, the survey monkey. Thank you, Heather, for the great feedback. And you can follow me on Facebook and see all my projects that I'm doing in my current home or go visit my website. Good. They're just uh, filling out an evaluation, and they'll be back shortly for, for more questions. Wonderful. So many good points. Now, I'm looking around my house, Veronique, and I see my big, huge microwave on the counter. And if I took that away, there'd be so much more counter space. But would they miss the microwave? Um, that's the thing, right? Um, you can, and as one of the ladies was saying, you can change your fan into a microwave hood um, as well. That's always a good option. Ours won't fit. We tried. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I think if you, when you get to that point, I think it would be talking with the real estate agent and seeing what people want most in your area, because obviously if, if the most important thing is counter space and they're not really going to look at the microwave or because each area or part of the country has different um, requirements or needs or values. Example, I'm from Quebec, right? Everybody can tell by my French accent, but um, in Quebec, we hate carpet. We love hardwood and we put hardwood everywhere in a home, like in the everywhere. And I know that here in Ottawa, people love carpet. And if I put carpet in my staircase, uh, that's going to be a negative point when I'm selling my home. So it really depends on the part of the country, the values, what people are looking for. So really talk to your real estate agent. They're the best ones usually to um, give you advice. Interesting. And Bella, Bella, um, she says she doesn't use the microwave on the counter. She uses a small toaster oven uh, for everything. It can fit in the toaster oven versus... Mm -hmm. Do you want to share that, Bella? Expand on that? Heather's going to check out your Facebook page. Yes, thank you. What information are you going to put on that? Um, I put, oh, I put, I just put ongoing projects, what I'm doing, um, because I, my husband's a uh, military engineer, so I keep him busy building stuff for me. <laughs> ah, very good. <laughs> very good. And when you're finished with the evaluation, to come back, you just click on the blue and green ball at the bottom of your screen. Excellent. Um, okay, so are there any other questions? Any other aha moments? What was really one of your aha moments that you found, uh, whoa, that's a great thing. For me, it was the microwave. Anybody else? 
feel free to speak up or put it in the chat. When we viewed the house, saw the limited counter space and their big microwave on the counter, the first reno I knew we would do was the microwave over the stove. Good. Yes, exactly. Uh, glad to hear Gray is just renovating kitchen now and choose Gray as the paint color. That's great. Yes, yes, definitely. That's what people are looking for, modern, young, clean. That's what they want. And that's the best part when people come in and say, well, I don't have to paint the house. For them, they see dollar signs, right? That For me, if I know I don't have to paint a house, I'd rather just pay the money and get the house that I want that's already painted the color that I want than having to pay a house less and then having to do all the work and painting the whole house. And that's what people are looking for, right? A move in ready, turnkey. Mm -hmm. Now, outside our uh, banisters are a little bit rusty, so we're going to ru uh, stand them down and paint them black. Mm -hmm. but I Very good. Black, black is excellent. Black is, again, the mo modern colors, what people are looking for. Black is really in right now as well. Krista, did you see the, the, a few, the few colors that I put there from Benjamin Moore in the grays? So these are all light grays, obviously. Um, I ha also put the worldly gray from uh, Sherwin-Williams. And there's darker grays, but darker grays, you really need um, somebody to give you advice on that because you can't, Darker grays cannot always be pulled off. It depends on the type of lighting you have in the home. And Wonderful. And uh, in order to exit out, Candace, thank you very much for letting us know you're heading out. Um, just click on the red X in the top right-hand side of your screen. And I hope to see you again at another virtual session. It was wonderful to have you here tonight. And thank yes, you very yes. much, Veronique, for sharing your expertise. Yes, thank you for having me. And as I said, thank you, everyone, for participating. I really appreciate it. Thank you.